I've lived in Austin for about 30 plus years now. I came originally to be in the legislature in the 70s and never left. I think we've changed um, in a very constructive, futuristic way to be more connected with uh, uh, research, science, the, the, the stuff that matters and the university has played a huge role in, in helping drive that equation. So uh, um, we were a sleepy college town in so many words, and uh, the future was pinned on, on oil and gas, not that that's a bad thing, but it was time to diversify our economy. So a series of competitions allowed us to compete and win and put us on a map that, that said these these guys get it and that the future is going to be about a knowledge-based economy uh, dealing with information technologies and things like that. So SRI came in here and uh, we asked them the simple question, what's, what's our future? And they said information technology and, and it's multiple uh, spinoffs and roles. And so while that seems simplistic, it was really what was considered pretty revolutionary when they told us that. The Chamber of Commerce, uh, in the fairly early days, decided we were not going to take on companies or groups that polluted the air or the water. That having clean air to breathe and clean uh, water to drink was a valuable community asset. So we turned away polluters. Secondly, uh, Dr. Norman Hackerman from the University of Texas pitched the wooer concept that we wanted to go for federal research dollars in selected fields so we could build an economy of the region around that. That was considered really pretty radical stuff in the 50s and the 60s. And then we got the break of having some branch offices of major technology companies like Advanced Micro Devices, IBM, Motorola, etc. in the end of 50s, 60s and early 70s that allowed us to have the branch managers and the technology in place to file patents and to do things when it came down to voting for MCC and Semitech. Member companies, for instance, just as an example, uh, AMD, Advanced Micro Devices, had a vote, one of five votes for MCC and Semitech. George Scalise, who was an AMD guy, later head of the Semiconductor Industry Association, voted for us twice. So you think about you know, if they hadn't been here in Austin and he didn't know the community that well, we may not have gotten those votes that allowed us to do all the rest of it. So, you know, a series of things like that, plus some leadership that said, hey, we don't want to be just another place on the road. We want to be a progressive, involved, connected, build off the resources we've got at the university. And that's part of how it happened. The rest is about the people and the passion that they felt about doing that doing the right thing for the right reasons at the right time. There's a fellow named Niels Thompson who puts together the Pickle Research Laboratory out here, now the Balconies, and obviously Dr. George Kosmetsky, who created IC Squared, was a legend for uh, valuable reasons. Uh, Admiral Inman, uh, former uh, important figure in the Navy and the CIA and the National Security Council, first head of MCC. A guy named Frank McBee, who uh, started Tracor as a spin out of the University of Texas, by modest estimates, 435 plus companies have spun out of what was Tracor to create companies here. And a whole galaxy of people like that, including Neil Kasurik, who's a wonderful, thoughtful man. I guess the, the thing I would say, Josh, is that that everybody pitched in to do the, the things that made a difference and there wasn't anybody seeking individual credits or uh, if you had a private agenda you better check it at the door because this was to get something done as a community that, that mattered big picture and people were very unselfish and very uh, much into the fact that Austin was a unique special place and we need to honor that 
Let's don't besmirch it. Let's grow it the right way with the right people. And so it was, it was a fantastic experience. Great ride.